Okay, welcome to another video. Um, this video is going to focus on configuring serial interfaces between two routers. Now here I have um, three networks already configured. Um, I have the 192.168.1.0 network here over on this side of the uh, router. I have the 192.168.2.0 network uh, here. And over here I have the 192.168.3.0 network. Um, and I have two different routers and I want to connect these two routers together. Now, um, these routers have um, already have serial interfaces installed. Um, as you can see here, there is a serial interface here. Um, this is a uh, what we call a WIC, uh, a WIC 2T card or an HWIC 2T card. Um, both of these routers have them um, already. Uh, this one has, has it as well. And so when you're adding these in, all you have to do is um, you have to grab, uh, let me move this up. You just have to grab the WIC 2T and drag it over. However, if you try to do it while the router is powered up, what it'll say is cannot add a module while the app power is on. You have to turn off the power, grab the WIC 2T module, drag it over, and drop it into the router. And then you turn the power back on, and now your WIC 2T uh, module is active, and the router will, will recognize the interfaces. Now, um, what I'm going to do while that's booting is I'm going to go ahead and grab um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the serial cable. So I'm going to come down here. I got to have my connections turned on. I'm going to grab this serial DCE cable. It's got a little clock on it. I'm going to go ahead and push push on that one. I'm going to come up here and click on this router. Click on uh, serial 010. And I'm going to click on this router and I'm going to do serial 010 as well. So now I have this router, uh, this cable put between the two routers. Now, as you can see, it's red because by default, uh, interfaces are turned off on a router. So we have to go do a couple things. We need to turn them on uh, or set an IP address, turn them on. And in some cases, you'll need to set what's called a clock rate. Now, the clock rate goes on what we call the DCE side of the, of the cable. There's a DTE side and a DCE side. Now, the way you can do this in Packet Tracer is you can just hover your mouse over the uh, connection point and you'll see a little clock that will show up right above the, uh, the mouse there. That is that indicates that that's the side of the router, that the uh, side of the interface, or the side of the cable that the clock rate has to go on. Now, newer versions of the operating system, of the iOS operating system, and new versions of Packet Tracer already have the clock rate configured for you, for the most part. Um, there may be a time when you have to set the clock rate. Um, what you do is you set the clock rate on the side with the clock, uh, which is in this case on, uh, is here on router one. Um, it depends on the router that you put in, uh, which one's going to have uh, the clock rate. Um, again, but it's already set, so um, uh, when you turn it on, it'll. when you put on the IP address, it'll come up. If it's not already set, all you have to do is set the clock rate, and I'll show you how to do that. Another way you can determine uh, which side of the uh, cable a clock rate goes on is you log into your router. And let's see, let's enable. Uh, and I'm going to go, I'm gonna, I remember now, I put it on serial 010, zero, zero, so I'm going to do a, a show. Uh, controllers serial zero slash one slash zero. I'm going to type that in, and then right here, um, if here's my the command I put in show controllers s zero slash one slash zero, and then I go one two three lines down, and I see the word DCE v point three five, and then it has next to it a clock rate. Now the clock rate's already set again on this router because this is a newer router. Now if the clock rate wasn't set, I would know because it says DCE that I have to put a clock rate on this side of the connection in order for it to work. And when, and when I do my configuration, I'll show you how we do that. Um, so coming down here, I do a config T. I'm going to go into my interface, INT S0 slash 1 slash 0. And now I can configure the interface. I'm going to put an IP address of 192.168.255.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.252. Now, the 252 um, subnet mask is important because it gives me two IP addresses, only two, so I don't waste a lot of IP addresses. And what that does for me is it allows me to put one IP on one side of the interface on the uh, connection and one IP on the other side of the connection on the interface. Um, and I only need two because I have two routers with a serial connection. It's called point to point, and I only need those two. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to do a no shut on the interface, and the interface should come up. Now, if you needed to do the clock rate, what you could do is you could put in the clock rate command. Clock rate, and I'm going to say 64,000. And I'm just going to put in the clock rate at 64,000. And that would I, if I had to put in the clock rate, that's what I would do. And let's go ahead and uh, end this, and we will write it. 
Now, coming back to my interface uh, or, my, or my packet tracer uh, um, diagram, I, you can see that only it is still red. I configured one side of the interface or the connection. I have not configured both sides of the connection. The, the uh, connection will not come up until you can do both sides. It's not like a, uh, a, an Ethernet interface where it comes up automatically when it's connected to the switch. Um, once it's once you've made that one con, uh, that one configuration change, which is bringing the interface up. In this case, because there's two sides to it, you have to do both sides. So let's go to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing on this side with just a different IP address. So I'm going to log into the router, go to enable mode, config T, int s0 slash 1 slash 0. And then again, IP address, uh, this is going to be 192.168.255.2, for my subnet mask. I'm going to no shut the router. Now, this time it says up. It's changed the state up. It should be it should be up now. I should have connectivity between the two, and I do. Now I don't have to put the clock rate on this side because the, this is a DTE side of the cable. It's not the DCE side. I only have to put the clock rate on the DEC, DCE side. So I'm good to go. I've got my basic configuration. I should be able to ping to the other side. Let's try it. Ping uh, 192.168.255.1. And there you go. Now I can ping across my serial connection. And that's the basics of setting up a serial connection. There's a little bit more nuance to it. Um, you might want to use uh, different types of encapsulation. You might want to use authentication, something like CHAP, which I'll show you in another video. But those gives you the, that gives you the basic commands that you need to set up the, uh, the serial connection. Again, IP address, no shut. Um, clock rate on the DCE side if required. It may already be there. Um, the router may already have that information in there. If it doesn't, you have to add the clock rate. Um, if the clock rate's not there, the, the, uh, the interface will not come up and you will not be able to ping from one side to the other. Um, so put in the clock rate and you'll be good to go. And you can put in a clock rate of 64,000, does just fine in a, in a lab environment. Um, and then you're, you've got everything you need. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope, it, uh, you, hope you found it useful. If so, um, please subscribe to my, uh, my YouTube uh, channel, and we'll see you in future videos. Thank you.